Thank you again for joining me in this hexagon tutorial. Today we're going to make coasters with our hexagons. You should have already joined your pieces together. If you haven't yet, go ahead and look at my other two videos for how to create this shape here. Um, you'll want to make sure that it's been pressed and that all of the paper has been removed from the back side. You're going to need a piece of felt that's just slightly larger than your hexagon piece. My felt is four and a half by four and a half inches and my hexagons along the longest side from point to point were one and a half on my templates. You have a couple of options for attaching the hexagons to the felt. You can trace the hexagon shape and cut this out and then you can use a whip stitch to stitch around the edge if you like. Um, or you can use a straight stitch around the edge, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this by machine, but you could also do it by hand. One thing you want to check, you'll notice I've got a few little strings peeking out there. I want to make sure that those strings are hidden underneath. And now I'm going to take a pin and secure my hexagons to my felt. So that's nice and flat. And I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to stitch around the edges using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. So let's go sew. We're ready to start sewing. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you know where the 8 inch guide is on your sewing machine. On my sewing machine, there's my needle position, there's my 1 4 inch guide, and so my 1 8 would be halfway between my needle and my quarter inch guide, which is about the middle of this foot here. Um, if you use a brother computerized machine like many of my students do, um, this is what the presser foot looks like. And the 1 8 inch mark is right here in the very center when you're set to stitch zero. Let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and line up your needle. You can really start wherever you like. It doesn't have to be Perfect, so I'm going to start right here. I want to make sure I have a grip on my thread tails. I like to start with my needle down. And let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do a couple stitches and then a back stitch. And I'm just going to go slowly around the edge. When my needle gets to the seam, right in between the hexagons, I know I have to pivot. So I'm going to lift up my needle, or excuse me, lift up my foot, keep my needle down, turn, and put the presser foot back in position. Then I'm going to keep stitching. Up and turn. Up and turn. You're going to be doing a lot of pivoting in this project. One more stitch, there we go. I'm at the center seam between those hexagons. Let's give you a little closer look. Okay. One more stitch. And you're going to keep going around in this pattern around the whole shape. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can do this straight stitch by hand. Just take your time um, to make sure those stitches are neat because they will be visible. Or like I mentioned before, you can always trace your shape, cut out the felt, and do a whip stitch or a blanket stitch, both of which look really nice on the edges of projects. And since the felt won't fray, and since the edges of your hexagons are finished, it's just fine to finish your coaster like that. Ooh, got a little close there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, if you use coordinating thread rather than contrasting thread, you're less likely to see your stitches. Also, again, make sure that those threads are tucked under. 
that was a knot that I started too close to the edge of the fabric. I want to make sure it's hidden. So normally when making this project, I would have used black thread, but I wanted you to be able to see my stitches. And if you like having contrasting stitches when you sew, that's awesome. Just know that you do have to be a bit more exact because they will be visible. And just for safety, I like to use this purple thing tool um, whenever I need to get close to my needle rather than using my fingers. I like to use that instead. Now I'm going to be really careful here now that I'm about to the end. I want to stop right exactly on my previous stitches so I'm going to line that up as close as I can. Do a back stitch and then I'm good to go. I'm going to trim my threads and trim my thread on the back. I got a little caught there. And now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off the felt. Now I have to do this really carefully because I don't want to accidentally cut my cotton fabric. So I'm just going to go very slow. Do each little side here. I'm keeping it about the width of my scissors away, so it won't be exact, um, but when I'm done, I can go back and trim any that I think are a little farther away. So that's a little further away than I would like, so I'm going to get closer in there, trim that off, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going, doing that for every side. So I'll finish that, and then we'll come back. Our coasters are all finished. We've joined together all of our hexagons. We have a nice solid piece of felt on the back and it's all been top stitched with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So there's only one thing left to do and that's to use our coaster. Enjoy!